All right. Now, what are we looking at? So what we're looking at here, this is the NVIDIA Visual Computing Module. And this is actually our strategy basically for autom the automotive market as a whole. And it's a board level solution that has uh, our Tegra silicon on it, all the supporting circuitry that's required mm -hmm. to kind of bring Tegra up. So it has dynamic memory, non-volatile memory, and of course any other kind of peripherals that would be necessary from a, you know, an external management standpoint. So from a functional standpoint, what's this, what would this unit um, handle? Okay, so from a functional perspective, uh, this is essentially a, a basically a computer on a module, if you will, true system on a module. Mm -hmm. And this would be the, uh, the heart of really what's behind your, your infotainment system or behind your reconfigurable cluster uh, um, in the vehicle. Which we're going to see is the reconfigurable instrument cluster. Exactly, which is exactly. Awesome. So, you know, the design examples that I'll point you to here okay. um, are, are all actually powered by this module. So again, this is a, our, our current module. This is a Tegra 3 based uh, uh, product. Um, but the reason why this modular strategy is so important for automotive is that this represents basically a common uh, form factor and common uh, mm -hmm. pinout that as we continue to innovate and you know design our next generation, yeah, exactly, Absolutely. design our next generation of silicon. You can also change firmware, a lot of things you can do. Correct. And yeah. the beautiful part about this is that this is the, the way we kind of think about trying to marry sort of the consumer electronics world to mm -hmm. the automotive world. So our design cadence on the consumer you know, side of things is roughly, you know, every year we're, we're bringing out a brand new uh, Tegra device. And then our thought is if we keep this package and we keep this pin out the same, then we can put the latest silicon down on a board like yep. this and then offer an upgrade path essentially for that, uh, that vehicle that's, that's going new into features, production. New functions, but also for perhaps aftermarket down the road. Yeah, potentially. Right? Dealers, it's a dealer serviceable thing it, it, that we might bump up your electronics if you're interested. Correct. I mean, it's something that uh, is still, you know, would need to be worked out with the, yeah, the relative, yeah. you know, the respective OEM. Partner. But it's it's a capability you don't have with anything else. That's correct. Today. Yeah, it's actually something that makes truly uh, NVIDIA unique uh, within automotive. So what are we looking at here? It looks okay, a so little bit like a toaster with vents on it, but I'm guessing it's not. No, so this is, this is actually a cutaway uh, from a Lincoln uh, vehicle. This is mm -hmm. actually the center stack out of a Lincoln. And what we're showing here basically is a replacement for the current infotainment platform that's, that's part of that, uh, that design. And what it shows is basically an example of two dimension, or, uh, 2D and 3D graphics um, presented in a very nice sort of mm -hmm. realistic way. Touch screen. Touch screen. Design standpoint, this could be part of a much larger system that has external controls. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, the purpose for building this, again, was to, to basically provide a, a reference design, a starting point for people who are interested in basically creating infotainment platforms for vehicles. Um, so what we've done here is build up a whole basically graphical framework that would allow you to basically have control over all the functions of your vehicle. And in fact, I call this sort of my car without the car. We've actually taken this one step further and we've fully integrated it into a Ford Explorer oh, where okay. it actually does control the climate, does control the audio, does actually you know, then act hmm. as the connectivity solution for the vehicle. Okay. So just to kind of walk you through some yeah. things, so we have, we have basic climate controls, we have a nice um, multimedia screen where we can then play back MP3 files that are either stored locally on the system or are part of a broad-in uh, type of device. So it's got some storage. So it has some has storage. has a drive on it. Okay. Oh, it's, it's all, it's all non-volatile. So it's, it's all... Oh, well, it's SSD it's, it's kind man, of thing? Yeah, managed okay. man. Yeah. Okay. Um, phone interface for basically connecting uh, your broad-in device so you can pair it over Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. And then place calls through the keypad here. And then something that's probably a little more uh, impressive from a visual standpoint. Yeah. Um, this is an example of basic three-dimensional... Uh, 3D nav. Exactly, exactly, 3D nav. And this is using a Google Assets database. So what you're seeing here is not actually a, a video. This is actually a true asset database that's being rendered real time. And so all that geometry is being calculated and then drawn on the screen. Is, and then, is it getting the basic data from Google Live? Or is, it, is this data in a database... So in, in, memory. in this implementation, uh, the data is in a database. Okay. Uh, but in terms of what you see in the vehicle today, for example, like what's in, in the audio over here, um, that actually is getting um, information from Google Live over a 3G uh, data connection. Okay. Yep. That's handy. That's so, helpful. So again, this is, this is the, the infotainment reference design. Okay. Uh, the next one I'll take you down here to, this is um, what we call a reconfigurable cluster uh, okay. design example. And basically that means that you have a nice you know, wide resolution um, LCD. And then on that LCD, we've provided a series of different uh, skins that, uh, again, with the controls, I can select, you know, which one I'd like to, to see. 
Okay. And this gives a way to basically customize the overall look and feel of what your, your driver information center might look mm. like in a vehicle. So we've got the nav coming up behind the gauges. This is assumably right above the steering wheel, right in the line of sight of the driver. This is, yeah. Where the gauges would traditionally sit. Yeah, one, one, one design idea or one design example of, of something like that. Yeah. And the thing is, is that the driver on the fly can switch between these views. Uh, so, so what you know, what we can do, you know, just from a presentation standpoint, is we can toggle um, what might be in that center, okay. center presentation. So, we can think of as uh, this is having different embeddable applications that might be useful for the driver. Okay, you know, something to maybe tell you about. Speed, what might be wrong with tank, the vehicle? You have a bad front tire. You have low pressure in the tire. Correct. But it's really cool, though. What I like is being able to put like that nav view right. there, so I'm not looking at another LCD That's right. off to the right and lower. Yeah, there's lots of things. I mean, again, uh, sort of showing you the art of what's possible here. Yeah, uh, is, is just to again get ideas going, and then you know, from a, an OEM perspective, then they distill it down into. What do they believe is really safe? What do they believe is really appropriate for the vehicle? But it's more than just look and feel. That's what I think is interesting about this. Is it's not just that we have different colored numbers and different looking needle. That's right. But there's different functions that you Truly. can see here. Truly different different functions and different ways to think about how you would combine functionality, uh, you know, within the within the vehicle today. Um, that's really what we think about, you know, as, as sort of the next evolution for the visual computing module in the vehicle is that as we continue to advance, you know, the Tegra Silicon, mm -hmm. um, we're going to add a, a CUDA-capable GPU. Um, when we do that, when we do that, when Tegra has, you know, a, a CUDA-capable yeah. GPU, that means it can now become a computational center uh, for the vehicle. So this means that not only can we do, you know, very, very beautiful uh, visual things, but we can also start to process uh, sensory inputs from the vehicle. But then the, is that the capability that gives you, or is that the feature that gives you the capability that Audi was talking about with predictive traffic, exactly. predictive um, uh, parking, yes, so that kind of stuff. So that's computed in the car, not online somewhere. That's correct. Interesting. Yeah. And again, that, that leverages basically NVIDIA technology, the NVIDIA GPU, as a, as a, you know, as a computational part uh, for that work. But it also implies you're going to need to have some data storage in the car, more data storage probably, in order to build those predictions. Uh, potentially. I mean, it, it's like okay. anything else. I mean, it's so we really believe fundamentally that the, that the car is now probably the, the largest mobile computer that you will ever own. And we mm -hmm. see more and more this trend of, of making it, you know, really into a true computing platform. And so, like one of the things on my wish list is that rather than having to carry an iPod between my car sure. and, um, and home, um, or in my previous car, having to load a couple hundred CDs onto a hard drive in the car, right. that there'd be some way to wirelessly have have a sync of music and entertainment. Uh, you're, you're, you're that, good, is that probably here now? Or? You're, you're a good promoter of, of the next concept. Oh, this, so, oh so, so, so I'm one, setting you up. Yeah, it was, a, it was a perfect setup here. So, um, one of the other uh, design examples. This would be this would be autos done by Logitech with their latest you know, <laughs> <laughs> Jet Fighter Four. Get it in stores now. So let me let me launch the application here. So what we have here is uh, basically a, a Nexus Seven tablet. So this is just a, a normal production tablet. Um, it has a Tegra Three device uh, inside of it, mm -hmm. and it runs Android. And what we've done is we built a little application here that basically allows us to have access remotely to the basically the mobile computer, the mobile Tegra Three device that's actually within the vehicle. Really? So I can simulate here. Basic menu control using this app. Toggle mm. different functionality within the vehicle. So, so the idea is, as you're saying, it's it's we're all walking around with these tablets, smartphones, mm -hmm. and wouldn't it be really really nice? I mean, if if they could all work together. So, so just very seamlessly, you get into your car, you could have a control app like this, but more importantly, you could pass all your multimedia. So you could pass your audio, potentially pass your video for rear seat entertainment. Maybe you're going to pass your photos. Do you pass it to the car, or does it actually live on the tablet, and the car reads it when you're there with the tablet? You could, you could, we, either or, you could really envision either either scenario happening. Yeah. Um, you know, where there could be shared services that are that are part of the the broad end mm -hmm. device. Um, that's kind of a, a current model that a lot of auto manufacturers like a do today. Kind of thing, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, Restaurant it, it, finding okay. that sort of thing. Right. Okay. And, and the idea would be that maybe something like that again is an application that, that you already have on your broad end device, and you simply want to leverage the service in the vehicle. 
You, uh, well, that's the thing. Do you want to run it on the tablet and have it display in the vehicle so the vehicle becomes a display device for it when you're in there, or does it actually run the vehicle? I, yeah, and right now we, we see both both okay. happening. Um, native applications, you know, running on the on the you know Tegra device that's within the vehicle, mm -hmm. or even you know application running on the broad end device and then you know linked to the vehicle some way. And this is the kind of thing that um, they were talking about in at least one of the sessions about being able to use your smartphone and before you even leave your house or the office, you've set up your route and your exactly. car knows it exactly, by the yeah. time you get there because they've communicated it and the car is also working on what's the traffic going to be, what's our best route, yep. uh, let's get updates on that, let's get updates on events, is there a game here, do we want to route around the stadium, Right. Um, and what's the parking look like. Exactly. All, Amazing. All, all functionality that, again, <coughs> from an application standpoint, could easily be worked out. Yeah. Because that's the thing, once you're instrumented, and once you have these interfaces, it's all a matter of programming from them. Right. Software is the differentiator with respect to what feature sets, what functionality you could have on top of it. So again, this is just sort of an overview of uh, a series of different ideas. Um, one of the points that I would reinforce in this is that we, we tend to remain pretty agnostic when it comes to operating systems. Again, so sure. sort of letting the, the OEMs have independence, letting the tier ones have independence over what really fits, again, their product uh, most appropriately. So this is an example of basically Android, this is an example of Linux, and this is an example of Windows RT. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even really catch that in looking at these, if there was that much of a, a and, difference. And that's the important thing. You shouldn't. So yeah. from an application level, you shouldn't. You and these things should all just remain just usable. Correct. So the, the idea is, you know, make this platform, make this platform as part of this, this modular approach, you know, the most stable thing. Uh, you know, from a design standpoint, and then iterate and innovate on top of it.
Um, and that's, you know, again, you know, the idea that's reinforced here with this flexibility to choose what type of software you want to run on that. Very cool.